Hello and welcome to YouTube Log, day number 138. This is where I measure and track what's going on behind the scenes, offering up insights and on lessons learned. So I had to slow down for the past 20 days while I was transitioning jobs out of the past 42 since the last logging. Uh, three videos are pulling in out of all the 51 I had built, 25, 11, and 8 watches per day. So for me, that's good, but I know that's peanuts compared to bigger sites. But it's nice to have that consistent traffic coming in, and it's increasing about every month. They're doubling. So, and uh, pff, the eight is a uh, green shot, so it'll be good for years. Not going to change much. The 11 is the WGU Masters. I just put that one out. 20 days ago so it'll increase and it should be good for a couple of years and the 25 is the IBM data science review and that should be good for another year or two or three it shouldn't change much so those three should continue to increase and pull in traffic and then writing articles really works well like it's visibility if you can write a good article and then point it back to the video and then the next thing I'm going to try is freeware I'm going to go seed a bunch of freeware tools for the next several months things that I use that I built for myself and use. I'm going to seed them and then those will also be like compound interest. Someone will use one of the Excel templates, someone will use one of the access databases. If I choose to go back and deploy some, or release some and make open source some of my C Sharp applications, any of those I'll drop them out there on GitHub and people will download it a few at a time, use it for a while and then cross it back in and look at uh, YouTube and look up the training documentation, or they'll go to GitHub and look if there's a new version, look at the documentation, etc. So over time, as the freeware moves from person to person and they come back, it should seed a bunch of viewers that aren't coming from Google, that aren't coming from YouTube, they're just organically coming from my tools that are out there. So we'll see. That's It's a long, long time in the making. So I'm going to start doing that now and it'll be months before I see an impact. And if after all of that, making training videos, making review videos, making freeware. If after six to 12 months of that, and I get it out of my system and have covered a bunch of topics, there's still a bunch I want to do. If all of that doesn't generate traction after a year, it's not a problem. Then I'm going to focus on what I really want to do. So I'm doing these things because I've been wanting to do them for years, and I'm just dot, uh, checking those boxes off. Then I'm going to refocus back on the data science if all that fails. And I already know that my top two videos are data science related. And I will just go out to government data, pull data down, and start doing statistical analysis and research on it. When I find interesting things, post videos. That is what I want to do long term. That would generate views and people would be interested in articles and videos on that. So long term, that's where I'll go. The material I make isn't entertainment that's there and gone. I'm trying to provide content that has a 5, 10, or 15 year shelf life. Uh, yeah, this worked out well, cross-linking the video. So everyone knows that Google ranks based on, they, they go index the world, every website in the world, and then they count up how many links across the world point to this website or to this video, how many point to this article, how many point to that website. They count them all up and that's how they rank things. So by cross-linking my video more, videos more, that ups them in the ranking. I talked about the hypothesis on freeware, where I'm seeding the freeware out there and having the about page point back for training to YouTube. We'll see if that works. That's another long-term strategy. Anyway, I, it's interesting. It's fun. Trying all kinds of stuff. And within the next six months, I'll know what works. I'll know what doesn't. And I'll know what content people like and what content they don't. Already, I, right now, I know people don't care about Excel training. They don't even really care too much about SQL Server tool training. What people really care about is opinions and experience on, oh, you did this, you took this certification on a data science class. What did you think of it? People love that. It's, it must be too specific, too granular. People just don't care or they don't want to watch it. So anyway, interesting. I thought by accumulating and grouping enough of that, people would be interested, but no. When people run into a problem like that, they just want to go Google it and then go right to Stack Exchange, Stack Overflow, and, and get their answer. They don't want to watch a 10-minute video to get an answer or watch a 10 or 15-minute video to get 10 answers of good things you should do. They don't care. They have a problem now. They want it solved. Google, Stack Exchange, Stack Overflow, done. So maybe the whole premise of doing training videos isn't a good idea, but we'll see. I'm still doing them because they're interesting and they're specific to the work that I do. And 
for coworkers or others, or when I'm a lead man or a manager, then I can point people to those and say, hey, go watch this. This will train you up when you're onboarding. So anyway, worth doing, but we'll see. I may not continue doing those. And there's a downside too. I'm babbling a whole bunch. When you have a whole bunch of videos that have zero views, that damages your YouTube rankings overall. So there is a downside to making all this content that no one's watching. And are, debatably, I should delete it, but I'm not going gonna, gonna to leave it because I think there's groupings and I think there's value there. People just have to, the right people have to come across it. So we'll see. Okay, let's fly through the rest of the material here. Uh, day 138, I'm adding the Medium article. So one article over 4,000 views. So that's not bad. And that's been out since January. It kind of did nothing, did nothing, did nothing. And then it spiked because the startup, which is a publication that's part of Medium, different people can do groupings can do uh, like uh, the, what is it the data towards data science is a big popular group the startups a popular group 776,000 readers anyway so it's really nice that they published my article and made me a writer uh, interestingly on the WGU article I wrote it's been out there 30 days I pushed it to them to publish but they didn't publish it because they probably didn't like it fine whatever but it makes a difference when they publish it then it gets on people's phones, their daily reads, and other stuff. I've been reading it for a long time, and that's why I decided to publish it. So it was really nice when they did that. And you can see the spike, drops down, spikes again. And the spikes, yeah, it's only 150 views a day. The green are internal. And then it has another 150 views that are coming in external. So that's, what, 300-ish views. So, no, that's cumulative. So scratch that. I'm wrong. The total is about 175. But what's happened is all these blues are coming in from Google. And once that uh, article ranked higher in Google and got on the front page, just six or there's five ads, two or three big Coursera, IBM, and one other. Then there's a uh, some dude's review, and then there's mine. And because it's so high on that page, I'm getting lots of traffic each day. And it's just adding up, bringing in viewers. So anyway, nice. That Medium article triggered that. Uh, and, and this has nothing to do with YouTube. This is just a Medium article. So I need to be writing more Medium articles, and I will. Whenever I put out good content that's valuable to a wide cross-section, unlike like the freeware I just did with the training, I, I, hmm, I may in two months' time, if traffic starts to trickle in, I may go write up a Medium article, not on the tool itself, but kind of an overview of why would you want to do exploratory testing or what kind of tools should you use for quick testing, small project testing? I'll come across to some angle like that, write up a Medium article, and that would trigger a lot of interest back in the tool. But not now. I'm not going to do that right now in the tools. Just you new. Know, I want to give it some time for people to use and fix bugs, etc. Anyway, Medium's good, good place to put content and cross-link back to YouTube. Okay, i got to get moving. So day 138, your channel has 2173 views. Let me pause here. There we go. I had to bring up my notes. So the red dash is the last time I did a YouTube log, 40-something days ago on day 96. Uh, I have 2,200 views now. I know it's not a lot, but hey, it's doubled from what I was 40 days ago. So I keep doubling every 30 to 40 days. And when you're starting at zero and you double, woo, you have two. And then you double, woo, you have four. It doesn't mean much. But if I can keep up that rate of doubling, eventually it'll mean something. Uh... This is nice, 157.7 hours. That's up from 72 hours, so it's doubled in 40 days. Uh, 49, 47 subscribers in the last something days, but 49 subscribers overall, which is up from 14 the last time I did it. And the area under the curve after the red bar is significantly higher. And I attribute that a lot to that cross-linking. But also, actually, it's just the... the it, hmm. So... What's driving this? Well, it's primarily the viewers coming in to see the uh, IBM Data Science course review. But why did that take off all of a sudden? Back here it spiked because of the Medium article. Then it dropped down. Then it started to pick up again. Why is it picking up? Well, because Google now all of a sudden is pushing a lot more towards that Medium article. Why is Google pushing more towards the Medium article? It's because right here... On that uptick in the average state higher, that's where I went and triple linked all of my YouTube videos. And I triple linked them back to uh, those different blogs and stuff. But so, hmm, I don't know. 
because it's not people, it's not this driving my YouTube links, which I don't know, which then drive the medium article traffic. Somehow the medium article is just doing well and that's driving traffic, so whatever. Uh, let's move along. Uh, YouTube analytics, they change stuff. So I'm no longer gonna look at a full view. I'm gonna look at the last 90 days and then you can see a trend. So impressions up 139%. So YouTube is sending out a lot more impressions on my content. And an impression just means when someone's viewing a YouTube video over on the right, there's a bunch of thumbnails. My stuff's coming up more frequently over on the right. The impression click-through rate, when someone sees my consistently themed, I mean, it's not the greatest, but I like it, where I have different color patterns for different uh, file groupings, uh, playlists. But anyway, it's up to three, it's up to 3.1%, which is up 161%. I used to be at like 2% click through. If this gets to five to 10%, then YouTube will promote the videos a lot more. And eh, 3%, I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not great. It just means that I suck when I'm doing presentations because, <laughs> well, not even that, that's retention. It means that people aren't interested in my thumbnail, they aren't interested in my title, or they aren't interested in my content area in general. 3.1% is not terrible. If you're above 2%, that's okay. But man, if I could get to the 5 to 10% range, that would be gold. And that's when you're doing stellar. Anyway, and I don't know how much higher it'll get. We'll just have to wait and see. And, and then there's a bunch of stuff I'm going to have to change. I do an Excel training videos. No, that, that lowers it. I have to pick contents that are specific to me, unique angles that I can bring to it, and unique topics, and then this will go up. Uh, views up 500% five times, that's nice. That's really nice. It didn't just double, it went up five times, the number of views. And the number of unique viewers went up even more, seven times, so that's great. And, oops, moving along. Engagement, the watch time. Now this one means speaks to my content. When my content sucks, people watch it and go, they click off and the number of hours is low. But here the watch time went up 600%. Well, it's also because the number of users went up 600%, as we'll see over here. So my watch time went way up, but my view duration didn't go up that much. It used to be just over four minutes. Now it went up to four minutes, 26 seconds. And my average videos are 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. So four and a half minutes means that, and, and I, I don't present it here, but when I look at the drop off on each video, 60%. 55, 60% of people drop off in the first 30 seconds. So I have to stop with my intro sections. No one wants to see that. They click a link, they want to see the content or a teaser. They don't want to see, welcome to my video on blog. So anyway, I got to change that up. I, I lose so many people in the beginning. And this duration is low because of that. And you're always going to lose half, maybe your people as they trickle off through the videos. But anyway, yay, it went up 17%. Boo, it's low. Uh, what else do we have here? All the content. Wow, 543 hours since the day before Thanksgiving last year. What is that? Four, five-ish months? 543 hours after my regular work days? So I'm throwing boatloads of time into this. Building videos, building freeware, that's what these two are. And both of these tools, that's, it's probably ten times, uh, four, five, six, ten times the effort went into it, but I'm on my fifth iteration of this tool across 25 years and this one I'm on my god I've been building so I've had since Fox Pro 1992 I've had some kind of time tracker for decades so sure it's 40 hours but all I was doing is fixing some stuff up and I'm gonna go do another 30 ish hours to fix some defects and rename it and do some stuff and get ready and I'm gonna roll this one out but this one just got rolled out as you can see with all these MTCM, my test case manager, that's all the videos that uh, document and train how to use this particular tool. So anyway, a lot of time and we'll see. I mean, obviously there's no pay, it's YouTube and I'm not planning on monetizing or anything. What I do want to do is get uh, viewership up there and and it becomes, and it's, it's I'm not doing it for uh, fame, not at all. I'm doing it for, job security and for respect. So if I get enough views and people start using the tools, then I can use the tools at work and, and then things flow nicely. But anyway, we'll see. So 138 days, 51 videos, 
543 hours total spent. 371 of these hours are on videos and the other 176 are on overhead. And right there is 88 hours of overhead just building tools. So when I'm going off for the next few months and doing this tangent on old freeware that I have and fixing it up and finalizing some that I never released and 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 fixing some other ones up and re-releasing them. I'm going to be spending a lot of overhead time and not making videos. But anyway, I just want to do it. I want to get those out there and get them on GitHub. On GitHub, I have my portfolio of uh, one data science research project for the IBM Coursera project. And I'm going to have a bunch of freeware stuff. And then I'm going to circle back when all this stuff is done in six, eight months. And then I'm just going to start focusing on data science researchy type stuff. And so my portfolio will grow and it'll just have that chunk of freeware work out there. And if people like and use freeware work, great. I will continue to build on it. I may even build new ones. But I also kind of think freeware is dead. 20 years ago, late 90s, early 2000s, I built a bunch of freeware. There were freeware sites all over the, the web and you could deploy them and lots of people pulled them down. 20, 10, 11, 12, it like cut in half maybe because corporations were tightening security. Now I go out and look and oh my God, all the freeware sites are gone, two cows, everything. The only thing that's left is SourceForge, which is even kind of a little bit flaky, and um, GitHub, which is fantastic, gold standard, open source, post your code. That's it. And corporate, large corporate clients, they will let, well, they won't, they lock all the laptops and computers down so that people can't download freeware, they have to get permission. And so freeware isn't what it was 20 years ago. Uh, open source is there. So if I open source my stuff, people can use it. But open source stuff tends to be by developers who have local admin access on their PCs. And I don't know. I could build that kind of stuff, but that's not what I'm interested in right now. I'm interested in building simple tools for data analysts, and data scientists, and not big, complex tools. Those are already covered. Our uh, Jupyter Notebook, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Notepad++, Ultra Edit, all that stuff. I, I don't want to spend time building something like that. It'd take a year or two, and those markets are already covered. I want to build something simple. And Anyway, I'm not going to go into it here. There's there's ideas I have and tools I have. So I'm going to go do that and get it out of my system. Anyway, uh, so per one minute of content creation, there is 26 minutes creating the videos. That's leveled off. And then 12.2 minutes of overhead. That's doubled since the last time I did this. And it's because of all the freeware. It's because of those 88 hours. So right now, that's just under 40 minutes of total effort per one minute of video shot. <laughs> and when things are really uber efficient, and I'm only focused on videos, I can get down to like 25 minutes of effort of researching, shooting, and editing the videos. And the shooting and editing is pretty quick. I've done so many of them now. And, and hundreds of hours of editing them and shooting them. What takes time is researching and editing the content and going back through it a third, a fourth, a fifth time and letting it sit, stew, and then coming back again. Anyway, so that's it. That's where I'm at now. Thank you for watching and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and subscribe. Also check out our other videos and related playlists in the boxes to the right.